Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Client Build 21 Part 2. In this part of the build log, I'm mostly going to focus on the assembly. I'm also going to start on the water cooling loop, the custom wiring, and the cable management. There's still some major things to consider and confirm for this build. Most importantly, the mods, because this build is supposed to be completely stock standard aside from the custom wiring. So with the mods that I've done to the case, I've already taken the mods further than I was supposed to. And this is something I always do in my builds. But as much as I'd love to modify this build further, particularly the case, because it's a great case to mod, this is about as far as I'm going to be able to take the mods, which actually means some changes to some of the components, for example, the radiators. The color scheme for this build is obviously black and green, and I'm going to be installing UV reactive coolant and UV lighting. These are the fans that I was originally supposed to use in the build Bitphoenix Spectra Pro green LED fans. Now, there's a number of major reasons why I have changed to noise blocker black silent pros. Obviously, the LEDs would have interfered with the UV lighting, but also because I much prefer the clean, understated aesthetics of black silent pros. There is nothing cleaner and stealthier looking than a black silent pro, mainly compared to these fans. The first component I'm installing into the case is the Corsair AX1200i. It's a bit of overkill for this build, but it will certainly allow for future upgrades, for example, a third graphics card. And I almost always use Corsair power supplies in my builds because they are great power supplies to do custom cables for. In a water-cooled build, you're always going to have a bit of silver unless you deliberately try to avoid it by using, you know, copper water blocks and modding. And in this build, we have the nickel-plated water blocks, the fittings, and a few other silver components. So I decided to change the Singularity Computer's ethereal single black reservoir mounts to silver to create a bit more of a silver accent, to balance out the silver in the build, to create more of a contrast between these components. You know, the, there was just too much black with the radiator, the pump mod, the black background of the case. So... Now it's going to help the reservoir mounts to stand out a little bit more because they were just disappearing into the background. If you're going to do custom wiring from the ground up, you also need to do custom wiring for the stock cables for the case. And for this case in particular, there is a lot more to do than usual because there's a lot more wiring in this case due to the extra features, the lighting which is all over this case. And you can see particularly on the bottom panel there, there is going to be a lot to do to modify those cables and to sleeve them. I'm doing a small mod to the fans. It's a very common, very easy mod. In my opinion, the only problem with noise blocker Black Silent Pros is the multicolored wiring used for the cables, the fact that it's not sleeved. But I can understand that because the cables are very short. And that is a great thing to have because it means you can use whichever extension cable actually suits. And these fans come with a couple of different extension cable sizes, a bunch of other accessories. They're a great fan. But even after you've installed these fans, the multicolored wiring is still visible on the side of the fan. So a simple mod to sleeve the cables all the way back to the fan motor. And I've replaced the stickers with 3M matte black vinyl. This is the fan splitter I'm going to be using in this build. It's a Mod My Toys Molex to 8 3-pin splitter. And the reason I'm using 8 3-pin is because I'm going to run all of the radiator fans off this splitter and also potentially the lighting. But if I don't run the lighting off this splitter, I'll be running it from the motherboard, which is what I normally do. I can't actually go any further with the build until I've completed the custom wiring for the stock wiring for the case. So I decided to tackle the most difficult of this wiring first, which is definitely down on the bottom panel for that lighting under the case. I cut out all of the connectors, I soldered everything, sleeved it all, had it looking really clean, but, you know, I'm a minimalist, and it was such a big sacrifice to have all of that extra wiring in full view on the bottom panel, just for a bit of lighting under the case, when the case already has so much lighting on the front panel, power supply shroud, rear I.O., and the lighting I'm going to be installing, it was just too much, and it probably would have only interfered with the UV reaction anyway. And... You know, with the amount of components we're installing into this little case and the water cooling system, there is going to be a lot of wiring. And there's not a whole lot of room to hide all of it. So we need to minimize it as much as possible. 
I've now completed the custom wiring for the stock wiring for the case and I've done the cable management. And you can see how clean it is. It's a great thing to have done at this point because it makes installing the rest of the components a lot easier and also it means that you know this wiring is out of the way so that we can do the rest of the wiring. Now this is the stock fan splitter which I'm not going to be using because I want the reliability of the Mod My Toys fan splitter and also their range. You know, I specifically needed a Molex to 8 3 pin. So you can see how clean this bottom panel is now without all of that extra wiring. I could have added some length and, you know, run it around the outside, but still a lot of mess for one little kind of unnecessary feature. And now there's just a single cable running from the bottom to the top where before there was this massive thick cable and it was just a mess. Now these cable management clips that I'm using here are actually ModSmart and I use these in all of my builds. They're very handy. Sometimes the adhesive isn't that great and if it's not I just rip it off and use 3M double sided tape. You can see where I removed the extra lighting from the connector here and I could actually install the case lighting, the UV lighting that I'm going to be installing into this connector and have it running off the same PCB but the power requirements might be different and I think I'd prefer to run it off the motherboard anyway because then you have extra control over the brightness and also you can switch it on and off. Now this is how I'm powering that PCB. It used to run to Molex. I've now run it directly to the power supply via a 6-pin PCIe connector which is what this power supply uses for the peripheral connection. So just a cleaner way of doing things with a direct connection. This connector up the front here connects to the lighting on the front panel and you know, I think all of this lighting is going to look great. The Razer logos with the lighting in behind them. Nice subtle green lighting in combination with the UV lighting. Now normally when I do custom wiring for case wiring, I'm able to do all of it. There was a couple of cables that I just could not do pretty much no matter what. I didn't touch any of the wiring on the back panel for the the button for the lighting and also the rear I.O. lighting because it's all clipped into position and you know I wouldn't be able to use those clips if I sleeve it it would actually make more of a mess so I decided to leave it but most importantly I was unable to sleeve the USB 3 and I thought I was going to be able to sleeve it but once I had it apart there's big mounts on the backs of the USB 3 connectors which prevents you from installing sleeving because they're just too big and you can't install bigger sleeving because then it's going to be loose so the only thing you could actually do here is cut the USB 3 cable which I was very tempted to do because it's too long and it's been many years since I've tied up extra wiring length because I always customize everything to length but you know I'm going above and beyond here anyway and it's only one little bit of cable that's not going to be sleeved that's going to be visible from around the front of the build and you know I managed to do everything else so I'm happy with the way it's turned out. I also used the USB 2 connector instead of all of the tiny little connectors for the power and reset buttons you know and the hard drive activity and the power LED and that's something I always do to clean things up. I'm now doing a full test fit for the radiators because at this point I haven't decided what radiator configuration I'm actually going to install and whether I'm going to further modify the case to fit the radiators that I want. So I've installed the motherboard and graphics cards as you can see and something about this motherboard is only the top two slots are wired for time 16 which means that's where the graphics cards have to go if you're installing two graphics cards. Now normally with a configuration with two graphics cards I like to space them out. Have the first one in the top slot, second one in the third slot just to balance the aesthetics a bit and this would also have meant that I could have used the beautiful EVGA SLI bridge but this is where they have to go so I have to use this flexible SLI bridge which doesn't look too bad you know it does blend in but nothing compared to the EVGA SLI bridge obviously I was very happy to find that I can install the Seagate SSHD 3.5 inch down on the bottom panel of the case there's actually an extra 3.5 inch mounting position there so even though I've removed all of the 3.5 inch bays from this build, you can still install one at the bottom. That is an excellent little feature, a great addition. I was very happy to find that. I'm not sure if it's actually going to fit depending on the radiator configuration I end up going for. It may be in the way of the inlet and outlet. Now these radiators are Hardware Labs Black Ice GTX. They're 54 millimeters thick 
And I've never built into this case. I had no idea what radiators were going to fit or what mods I was going to do. But you can see that specifically the top radiator doesn't fit. It's almost touching the motherboard. And that is a 280 millimeter radiator. And that's without the fans. So also considering that the 360 millimeter radiator I have installed at the front, it's actually not installed, it's just sitting there. I've had to swap the pump and reservoir config from a 250 millimeter reservoir down to a 150. And this is something I'd really prefer not to do because I love the look of the nice big pump and res config, which goes all the way down the length of the 360 millimeter radiator. But I would have to drop it in size if I were to use a radiator of that thickness at the front of the build because it doesn't fit between the radiator and the power supply shroud. Obviously, all of this can be sorted out with mods, but I've already mentioned what needs to happen. You know, I can't take the mods any further, so I'm going to be dropping down to Black Ice GTS 30 millimeter thick radiators, and I'm going to install two 360 millimeter radiators. So, you know, I think that's a better configuration anyway, and it solves all of the problems at the same time. While I'm waiting for the new radiators to arrive, I am a bit limited as to what I can actually work on, but Something that I can start is installing fittings and lengths of tube, particularly on the motherboard area. So I've opened up the Massive Singularity Computers Fittings Collection, and as always, I'm going to be using BitsPower Black Sparkle fittings in combination with BitsPower 16mm acrylic tube. And I am going to be bending the acrylic tube. I can also work on custom wiring. There's always plenty of that to be done. Now, I build all of my custom wiring from the ground up, except for two cables. SATA data cables, and it's obvious why I don't build them from the ground up, and also fan extension cables. Now, the SATA data cables that I like to use as much as I can is Bitphoenix Alchemy because they have a really nice cable design. The connectors are perfect for running heat shrink all the way up and hiding the whole connector, and they're already sleeved with a very fine sleeving, and when you sleeve over it, it just creates a perfect thickness and a great looking cable and they're also a good length at 30 centimeters which covers pretty much the lengths for most cases. The fan extension cables I don't really mind which ones I use but the reason that I don't build my own fan extensions is because you need to solder on the male connectors and that takes a lot of extra time so it's a lot quicker and easier just to use pre-built extensions. You rip the sleeving off I always use MDPCX sleeving, nothing else. So I replace everything with MDPCX. I leave the connectors off the end so that I can get the exact length that I need. For me, the biggest reason to do custom wiring is to customize the cables to the exact length that you need. Obviously, a big part of it is aesthetics. And for most people, that's the main reason because a lot of people just use cable extensions and hide the mess around the back of their build. And yes, you can still get good aesthetics that way, but I want my entire build to be as clean as possible. And I just cannot go hiding cable mess. You know, it has to be perfect. And it's really not that hard to get the exact lengths. And if you're going to go to the trouble of doing custom wiring, you certainly should do this. So how I do it, I use a length of 18 gauge wire and I route it in the exact position I'm going to be running my cables. And then I measure it off. And you can experiment with different cable routings and you can get the exact lengths that you need down to the millimeter. And you know, this massively improves the aesthetics, how clean your build is, you know, even where it's going to be hidden, you can still have incredibly clean wiring if you get those lengths right. What you're looking at here is some of the systems that I've built over the years since I started my channel. And we're taking a look at them because I have an announcement to make. I first started sleeving cables because I was inspired by MDPC. I remember the systems that they had on their site years ago. I think it's still there. I'll put a link in the video description. But back then, there was absolutely nothing like that. Before MDPC, we had exposed multicolored wiring and no importance was put on wiring whatsoever. So MDPC really pioneered sleeving for computers. And it brought a lot of change because they also pioneered the clean, understated aesthetic that we all aspire to today. And they also brought a product to the market which is just incredibly high quality. I don't even know how they do it. I could say a whole lot more about their products, but I don't need to because they have an amazing reputation. Everybody knows how high quality MDPCX products are. 
Well, I am incredibly privileged to have partnered with MDPC and now have MDPCX products on the Singularity Computers store. I'll put a link in the video description so that you can check that out. But it's just incredible to be working with a company who has inspired me for so long. Since I started sleeving cables, I've used nothing but MDPCX products for good reason. A lot of you know that I've had a lot of trouble funding the channel since I started it, and that's because it's something that I've had to put all of my time into, but I don't get anything back in return. And I do that because I love doing it, but we've always been looking for new ways to fund the channel. And this is just another amazing opportunity and a way to fund the channel where it's a win-win because you get an amazing product and at the same time fund the channel. So that sums up this part of the build log. In the next video, I'm going to build the loop and fill it so the system will be close to completion. This video would not have been possible without our patrons, so a massive thanks to them. Thanks for watching.